Hello dear friends, welcome back. We are discussing about the anatomy of human respiratory system. So in the previous uh, 13 lectures we have uh, discussed about nose, nasal cavity, we discussed about pharynx and we discussed about the larynx. Now it's turn to discuss about the <coughs> trachea. So trachea is the beginning part of the lower respiratory tract. Uh, we know that our respiratory tract is divided into two uh, important regions, the upper respiratory tract and the lower respiratory tract. So in the upper respiratory tract we have discussed uh, about the nose, nasal cavity, the pharynx and the larynx. Now the first part of the lower respiratory tract is your trachea. <coughs> so let's define it. Trachea is a non-collapsible membranocortilaginous tube forming the beginning of the lower respiratory passage. So in the definition there is non-collapsible. Non-collapsible means it's a tube which cannot be collapsed, right? Because it is made up of cartilaginous rings. So those cartilages, when we press them and leave them back, they come to their position back. So that's why we say they are non-collapsible. Membranocartilaginous. Membranocartilaginous means that the trachea contains cartilages and membranes. In this image, you can see in between the two cartilaginous rings, there is a very small uh, uh, ligamental membrane. There is a small membrane, so we say membranocartilaginous tube. It's a tube like structure forming the beginning of the lower respiratory tract. So, this is our trachea. You can see this is the larynx. Here is the larynx, and this is the trachea and up to the carina uh, we call it trachea and then the two bronchi okay what is the location of the trachea in our body trachea extends from the lower border of cricoid cartilage at the lower border of c6 vertebra to the lower border of t4 vertebra in supine position when a person is in supine position the upper end of the trachea is in relation to the c6 lower border of c6 and lower end of it is in relation to the lower border of t4 vertebra right so it's the exact location it's topography of the trachea then what is the shape of the uh, tr trachea it's a tube like hollow cylinder in shape right uh, we know that when we put finger inside it, there will be a tube-like structure, nothing else inside the lumen is empty totally. So we said this is the, this is the trachea, this is the lumen and this is the cartilaginous ring and behind it is there the tracheolus muscle is there and behind it this is the esophagus. So look. Then the parts of the trachea, trachea is divided into two parts, the cervical part and the thoracic part the cervical part of the trachea is located in the neck and the thoracic part is located in the superior mediastinum of the thoracic cavity superior mediastinum then the dimensions the length of the trachea is from 10 to 15 centimeter its diameter is 2 centimeter in males and 1.5 centimeter in female and the diameter of the lumen is 3 mm in newborns and 12 mm it means 1.2 centimeter at puberty right so the lumen the, the the diameter of the lumen okay if you want to uh, discuss about the structure of the trachea the trachea is composed of 16 to 20 c shape rings of hyaline cartilage so the cartilage present in the trachea is hyaline cartilage they are c shape c shape means they are not complete a ring right you can see in this diagram also from here the 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 ring starts and comes up to here so they are not continuous with each other so we say they are uh, the the track is composed of 12 to six, 16 to 12 c shape c shape means it's incomplete right ring of hyaline cartilage lying one above the other the cartilages are deficient posteriorly deficient posteriorly means they are not 
fully made up of cartilage is posteriorly where the gap is filled by connective tissue and involuntary muscles called the tracheales muscles so here in the next diagram we can see look carefully if you see friend from here the cartilage begins and goes to that side up to here and behind both these rings uh, be, both these ends of the c shape ring are connected with this muscle you can see the muscle behind it so this is called the tracheal tracheales muscle right so again trigger the absence of the cartilages on the posterior aspect allows the expansion of esophagus during deglutition when the esophagus during deglutition when the esophagus is full of food stuff so the esophagus will expand when ex it expands it applies certain a, a little bit pressure on the trachea so to to gain that pressure to allow that pressure to allow that expansion of this uh, uh, esophagus there is the muscle and this muscle is pushed inward uh, which is allowing the uh, esophagus to open properly for the deglutition of the food substances in the cross section the trachea appears d shape or horseshoe shape not completely c shape it appears a horseshoe shape or d shape you know a b c d so d shape trachea appears okay this was about a little bit at structure now the cervical part of the trachea is about 7 cm in length it extends from the lower border of cricoid cartilage to the upper border of the minubrio sterni right minubrio sternal joint okay this was about the location of the cervical part now what about the blood supply of the trachea the arterial supply of the cervical part of the trachea is derived mainly from branches of inferior thyroidal artery right inferior thyroidal artery gives blood supply to the uh, cervical part of the trachea right and then the 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 mediastinal part of it gets its blood supply from other branches of arteries right so we call them tracheoesophageal branches also are there tracheoesophageal branches what about the venous drainage of the trachea that from the trachea the deoxygenated blood is drained from into the brachiocephalic vein and what about the lymphatic drainage of the trachea these lymph fluids from the trachea drains into pre and paratracheal lymph nodes there are pre and paratracheal lymph nodes which are responsible to drain the uh, lymphatic fluids from the trachea friends the next thing what is the innervation of the trachea trachea receives its parasympathetic fibers and sympathetic fibers so parasympathetic fibers are derived from vagus nerve through the recurrent laryngeal nerve so recurrent laryngeal nerve which is derived from vagus nerve gives parasympathetic innervations to the trachea they are sacromotor and sensory to the mucous membrane and motor to the trachealis muscle right next the sympathetic fibers are derived from the middle cervical sympathetic ganglion they are vasomotor in nature okay friends this was about important points about the trachea now the next thing is what are the relations of the trachea if you are talking about the relations we say that what is present anteriorly what is present posteriorly what is present on each side so anteriorly if we put our hand on the neck or the thoracic cage from outside the body first of all we will find the skin right anterior to your trachea there is externally or outside first of all there is skin beneath the skin there is superficial fascia beneath the superficial fascia there is investing layer of deep cervical fascia beneath the deep cervical cervical fascia there is sternohyoid sternothyroid and sternohyoid muscles are there 
Beneath these muscles, there is asthmus of thyroid gland. Beneath that, there is inferior thyroidal vein. And beneath that, there is left brachiocephalic vein in children. And after that, there is thymus gland in children also. So, anterior relations from outside, if you go inside towards the trachea, from superficial, if you go deep, there is skin, there is superficial fascia, there is deep fascia, there are two muscles, then there is uh, the asthmus of thyroid, then inferior thyroid vein, then brachiocephalic vein, and then there is thymus. What is the uh, number eight? There is brachiocephalic artery also in some children. What is posterior to it? Posterior to the trachea, there is esophagus. And there is importantly a recurrent laryngeal nerve in the tracheoesophageal groove on each side. And on each side to it is related the lobes of the thyroid gland. Yes, we know extending up to the fifth to sixth tracheal ring. And the common carotid arteries in the carotid sheath. Right. So these were the relations of the uh, trachea also. So friends, this was a little bit... Uh, about the anatomy of the trachea right so we discussed it the relations of the trachea next lectures will be inshallah about the bronchial tree so see you guys there till then Allah Hafiz